In this lesson, we're going to be writing an equation of a line given its slope and a point of a line, writing an equation of a line given two points on the line, and then using linear equations to solve real-life problems. Writing equations of lines in point-slope form. Given a point on a line and the slope of a line, you can write an equation of the line. Consider the line passes through 2, 3 and has a slope of 1 half. Let x, y be another point on the line where x is not equal to 2. You can write an equation relating x and y using the slope formula with x1, y1 being equal to 2, 3 and then x2, y2 being equal to x, y. So if I plug those points into this equation, I'll get 1 half equals y minus 3 over x minus 2. And one thing I can do is just multiply the bottom on both sides. So multiply x minus 2 on both sides. Okay, and now when I rewrite this, I will get 1 half times x minus 2 equals y minus 3, because these cancel out. Okay. From here, I've used my two points, which is 1 is 2, 3, and then x, y can be any single point on the line besides 2, 3. Um, I've written this equation in point-slope form. We're going to talk about that right now. A linear equation written in the form y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1 is in point-slope form. The line passes through the point x1, y1, and the slope of the line is m. Okay, So we see the general form of the formula here. Make sure you write that down in your notebook. And it passes through this point, x1, comma, y1, okay? And the slope of this line is m. Okay, in this example, we're going to write an equation in point-slope form of the line that passes through the point negative 8, comma, 3, and has a slope of 1 fourth. So I'm going to use my point-slope form formula, which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, the entire quantity, and now I'm just going to plug in my values. Here's my point. This is, I can call this x1, comma, y1 right here. And then here's my slope, hence the point slope. So I'm just going to plug this in here. And then my x component of this point is negative 8. So this x becomes negative 8. The y becomes positive 3. So this is y minus 3 equals 1 fourth times x minus negative 8. And I'm just going to rewrite this negative 8 because it's out of place. So negative 8. But if you remember, two negatives here will become a positive. So this is going to become y minus 3 equals 1 fourth times the quantity x plus 8. And now we're done with this one. For this example, we're going to write an equation in slope-intercept form of the line shown. Well, there's actually more than one way to do this. First, I'll use point-slope form, and then I'll use uh, slope-intercept form. Anyway, I'm going to start with my point-slope form, which is y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1, okay? And what I need to do is I need to find the slope. If you remember from a graph, I can just use rise over run. So I'm going to start at this point right here and then figure out my rise and my run. One, two, three, four is my run. So I'm going down four, so it's negative four. So change in y is negative four over the change in x, well, I just have to move 2 to the right, so it's going to be positive 2. This simplifies to negative 2, because negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Okay, So I'm going to plug this value in for my m, and then all I need to do is pick any point that I know is on this line. Well, I'm given 2. It doesn't matter which one I pick. I could pick 1, 2, or I could pick 3, negative 2. I'll stick with 3, negative 2, but you can try doing 1, 2 on your own if you want. Both would be correct. Anyway, so these, this is my ordered pair I'm going to pick. So I'm going to get y minus, well remember this is negative 2, so this is really going to be y plus 2 equals negative 2, which is my slope, times x minus 3, right here. Okay. Now I need to convert this into slope-intercept form, aka just solve for y. So I'm going to distribute my negative 2 so I get negative 2x plus 6. Over here I get y plus 2. Then I'm going to subtract 2. And when I subtract 2, I'm going to get y equals negative 
2x plus 4. Okay, so that is how we do that using point slope form. Right here on the left side of my screen, I want to figure this out using slope intercept form to start with. So if you remember, slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. Okay, now I'm going to scroll back up so we can see our two points. Well, the first step would be to find the slope. Well, I've already found the slope, okay? So if you're going to do it from scratch using slope intercept form, what you'd do is you'd find the slope first, okay? So the slope is negative 2. So I can plug that in to this m right here. So that's y equals negative 2x plus b, okay? Well, now I just need to figure out what the y-intercept is going to be, okay? And once again, I have an x and a y here. This can be any x-y pair that is on this line. I could use the point 3 comma negative 2, but since I just used that one, I'm going to use the point 1 comma 2 just to show you that it does not matter which point you pick as long as it's on that line. So now I'm going to plug in. My x component of this point is 1, so that's going to go in for x. My y component is 2, so that's going to go in for y. So now I have 2 equals negative 2 times 1 plus b. This becomes negative 2. And then I'm going to add 2 on both sides, and I get b equals 4. Okay, So I have my slope. I have my y-intercept. Now I can write an equation in slope-intercept form. Once again, I'm going to get y equals my slope, which is negative 2, x, and then my y-intercept plus 4. And as you can see, it's the same exact answer no matter what method I get. Uh, so we know we're right. Write a linear function f with the values f of 4 equals negative 2 and f of 8 equals 4. Well, remember, these two function values correspond to ordered pairs. This ordered pair right here is going to be the point 4, comma, negative 2. This one's going to be 8, comma, 4. And now I'm going to do the same thing that I did um, in the last example to get the equation of my line. Okay. First thing I need to do is find the slope. So I'm going to do my change in y over change in x, which is the same thing as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I'll call this point 2 and I'll call this point 1, but it doesn't matter. So I'll do negative 2 minus 4 over 4 minus 8. And this is going to give me negative 6 over negative 4, which simplifies to 3 halves. Okay, so now I have my slope. My slope is 3 over 2. Okay, so now you can either use point slope form or slope intercept form, just like we did in the last example. I'm going to use the slope intercept form here, uh, but you could use point slope form, like I just mentioned. Anyway, my slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. Okay, well, I have my slope. My slope is 3 halves, so I'm going to plug that in. And I can use either one of these two xy pairs here that I have, these ordered pairs. Uh, I'll use 8, comma 4. So my y value is 4. My x value is 8. And I don't know what my y-intercept is yet. Anyway, I can simplify the 2 and 8. So I get 3 times 4, which is 12, plus b equals 4. Now I'm going to subtract 12 on both sides to get negative 8 for my y-intercept. Okay, well, I, I have my slope. I have my y-intercept. My slope is right here. My y-intercept is right here. So my equation is going to be y equals 3 halves x minus 8, but I want this in function form. So since I want this in function form, instead of y, I'm just going to write f of x. So I'll slide this over. So f of x equals my slope, which is 3 halves times x. And then it would be plus b, but since it's negative 8, I can just write minus 8. So now I've successfully written a function given the two function values from above. And now we're done with this one. The student council is ordering customized foam hands to promote school spirit. The table shows the cost of ordering different numbers of foam hands. Can the situation be modeled by a linear equation? Explain. If possible, write a linear model that represents the cost as a function of the number of foam hands. So for this one, we basically just want to see if this is a linear function. And if you remember, a linear function has a constant rate of change. That means that if I'm increasing x by 1 each time, I'm going to increase y by the same number each time. Okay. So anyway, 
I can look here, and given the table of values, it's actually pretty easy to figure out whether or not it's a linear function. So I notice that every single time for the number of foam hands, I'm adding two. So to get to the next one, I'm adding two. And then over here, for the cost, in this case, I'm adding 12. So I add 12 here, 46 plus 12 is 58, so that still works. 58 plus 12 is 70, that works. And if I add 12, I get 82 again. So because every time that I add two, I'm adding 12, I know this is a constant rate of change. One other way you can figure this out is whatever you're adding in y, just divide that by x, and that's actually gonna be your slope. So 12 divided by two is the slope, and it's constant at the same time. So I know that this is all gonna fit on the same line. Anyway, now that we know that it is possible, we wanna write a linear model that represents the cost as a function of the number of foam hands, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do is find my slope. Well, I just figured out my slope. My slope is change in y over change in x. But if you can see, my change in y is 12 each time. I'm adding 12 in this table. And then my change in x is two each time. So now I know my slope is 12 over two, which is six. So that's my m. Remember, change in y over change in x is m. Okay. Now I just need to find the y-intercept. So for my function, I'll do y equals 6x plus b. And I just need one xy pair. Okay, and remember, I'm calling x the number of foam hands and y the cost here. Okay, so I'll just use this first one, 4 comma 34. So that means I'm going to plug 4 in for x and 34 in for y. So down here, it's going to look like 34 equals 6 times 4 plus b. Well, 6 times 4 is 24. Now I just have to subtract 24 on both sides. Make sure that looks like a four. I get 10 for my y-intercept. So I know that my function is gonna look like this, y equals six x plus 10. Once again, if you wanted to use point slope form here, that's totally fine. Instead of doing what I just did here, you would write out your point slope form equation, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We already found our slope, which is six. And then you just pick a point. So I'd pick 4, 34. So what you would do is write y minus, well, y1 is 34, equals the slope, which is 6, times x minus 4, my x value. And then when you simplify this, y minus 34 equals 6 times quantity x minus 4, you are going to end up with this. And I'll let you guys check that out on your own. But anyway, we've successfully gotten our function, and now we're done.